Getting representation thing is, is so complicated. It took me a long time because for the most part, people don't necessarily want to work with you unless you have some credits to your name and you can't get credits to your name without representation. You know, one of those catch 22 things. I just say work, 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 work. Get a magazine, do plays with friends, do the, you know, the student film from Columbia. Just make sure you're always working on something, representation or not. I think I was trying to get a manager and I was in a small office and he was behind a desk and I started my monologue. It was a teensy space and in the middle of it, the phone rang. So I stopped and he said, no, no, keep going, keep going. As he was on the phone, I am sitting here doing the monologue to him. He finishes conversation and I'm at that point, you know, and he looks at me, he's like, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, you looked like you were really into it. Thank you. Lots of good stories like that. Whatever uh, preparation I do, it's, it takes place on a level that I'm not entirely intellectually aware of. I do something. I find myself reading certain books or stopping in certain stores and I think, gosh, what am I doing here? And I find out later on, oh, I think that's because of the movie I was working on or whatever. So I, I can't push myself around as far as that stuff is concerned. It's always been a very sort of subterranean process for me. I still wake up on days and can't believe that this is what I get to do. I still feel for sure like the luckiest person in the entire world. And if I ever start to take any of it too seriously, very easy to kind of bring you back down to the ground that this is, um, you know, the most glorious profession in the world, if it's what you love to do. I'm sure, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, a senator may disagree with me. It has brought me nothing but tremendous joy for my whole life. And just remember that as you're pursuing this, it's the best thing in the world and bring that into every audition you go on, every meeting you have. Just remember what a gift it is to be able to be passionate about this and to get to do it. When you go to an audition, especially a movie, TV thing, you're gonna get two or three pages of a scene. Somewhere on that two or three pages is a speech or half a page where your character does something that matters. Memorize that part. To have that memorized that you know it means your eyes come up, means you're talking here, means they can imagine this. You're there to solve their problem. You're the answer. Be nice, be a pro, and then solve their problem. I'm the guy. Memorization is, there's nothing exciting about it. It's drudgery, it's repetition, it's finding words that are similar sometimes. Sometimes it's that technical. Find a sentence with R-E. It's got refuse in it, and then, then later on in the sentence it's require. So just circle the re and the re. So now it's, you know, you know that it's the require and it's the refuse or whatever it is. Just little stepping stones across the river, which is the sentence. And then, then musically, your mouth has to get used to saying these words together right now mouth is memorizing where it's gonna go next. Singers do this all the time. There's this kind of muscle memory for the lips and the cheeks and the mouth, but that comes from the brain being able to memorize it, all words, all syllables, and then run at 100 miles an hour. When you can do that, all of that stuff, then you add in the motivations and all that, but you can slide some of those in too. And then the next thing you know, you don't even think about it and you're reeling off pages and pages and pages. I find what's interesting is to read about not just the person you're playing, if that person is someone. Like say for Kill a Mockingbird, I'm reading all about 1935 Alabama, biographies on Harper Lee. You go to school, you go to grad school, because the people who are really serious about this are doing that. Go to other people's movies, the good ones and the bad ones, because you're going to learn what not to do. If you're in the theater, stay in it. If you're not in the theater, get in it. If you want to work on anything, just work on being a better actor. Stardom, you don't have any control over that. You may think you do, but you don't. If you can continue to be a better actor this year than you were last year, then you got a chance of sticking around. I think the best advice that I could give someone who was starting out is to to study and and um, learn. Um, don't be afraid to take different kinds of classes, different different acting um, techniques. Y you never know what's going to work for you. And I found it enormously helpful and also comforting as I was trying to find work to always be in a class. So I was always acting with people and being around people who were struggling and doing the same thing I was. Um, that's what saved me, I think, when I was, wasn't working as constantly taking classes, getting involved in um, 
theater companies doing I did um, you know backstage work I was a stagehand for a while I did you know learning all the different aspects too I love and you know for directors young directors and playwrights did they should all take acting classes they should all know how to act it's a, it's a very it's a great skill to have to when you're you know t trying to communicate to actors to know what they have to go through the first thing I I look for um, when I'm looking for a job or hopefully you know I get offered one but I, I, I look at the script the script is the first thing the the written word the 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 characters if it's a uh, story is character driven or or I, I look for strong female characters obviously I always look for the, the the script to to move me and and characters who have a nice arc they have a beginning middle and end they go through something they come out the other side they don't always have to be you know um, good characters they can be evil you know with Whatever I just, I, if I can find a way to um, relate to them and, and see myself doing, I get excited writing the. I get excited uh, reading the script. If it resonates with me, I jump at it. I like things that are messy. I don't necessarily, when I'm doing something that's a comedy, I'm not. I don't act like I'm in a comedy. I don't try to be funny. I, I think the stakes tend to be higher when you're in a comedy, um, um, but I. I kind of look at it all as the same, even though I know they're different styles. Like doing a Noel Coward play is different than doing an Arthur Miller play, and I've had the I've gotten to do both of those, and I know how to operate in both those worlds. And I don't know why I know how to do that. I just do, and I don't know if I learned that or if it's just um, instinctual. But I, I I grew up watching Carol Burnett on on um, television, watching that great comedian. Um, she inspired me enormously, and um I'm watching women like you know Maggie Smith and Judy Dench and and Meryl Streep and all of these women ins inspired me um as an actress and wanting to be one Laurie Metcalf inspired me I, I saw her in a performance of Balm and Gilead in New York City and I, I I wanted to quit acting after I saw her because I was just I thought well she's that's it. I don't know if I could do that. She's so brilliant. I, you know, every time I, I start a new project, I think, how do, how do I do this? I feel like I've forgotten how to act or what I do. And every, every single part, I think that. And I go, what did, how do I do this again? And I go back to all my acting books. I go back to my Stanislavski book. I go back to, you know, David Mamet actors on acting. I go, go to. I just start looking at all my acting books, and and um, and I've even hired acting coaches just to look at something from a fresh pair of eyes and get some feedback and some help. But um, but usually I, I read I, I read the script or whatever I'm doing a, a, a you know minimum of of like ten times. Just read it without making any decisions. Just read it, just to let it get in in my body and 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 understand the story and I start to understand what my character wants and I start out to figure out what they need and what why is this scene in the play or movie what what's important what's what do I have to accomplish in the scene why is the scene in this movie why is the scene in this play what do I need to ha get and my objective I think of um, you know I, I in I Tanya I play a woman who's on the page pretty awful horrible abusive woman and my challenge there is to find her humanity what makes her three-dimensional because she's not just a terrible woman there's something that makes her that she had to come from you know if she, she was a little girl once and had a family so I have to start putting together that puzzle in my mind what what she must have been abused herself this must have happened and and so it makes sense so I can connect and have some empathy for her or feel you know so you know I can play her and and she's a real a human, a real person, no matter how awful. Um, conversely, if someone is, you know, seem my character in um, uh, the way way back was, you know, pretty boisterous and loud and funny and drinking and laughing, but but I knew. I had to think, okay, she's hiding something there. I had to look underneath. I'm always looking for what's underneath. That's my favorite thing to do as an actor. I feel like I'm a little detective trying to figure out what's underneath the character. What makes them, what, what are they afraid of? What do they tell themselves to get up every day? And what do they, what do they believe in? And that's, that's the fun work. And then, um, and then I use a lot of music in my acting. I love to prepare listening to 
if, if there's an emotional need, I like to listen to music that moves me. And um, I studied at the Neighborhood Playhouse in, in New York City, and, and they taught you a lot about emotional preparation. Sometimes, you know, your preparation doesn't have to... Sometimes, for me, my preparation has nothing to do with the character or the play or the movie or whatever I'm working on. It can have absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, but, and if the subject matter itself doesn't... I can't connect to it, then I go to music and find what moves me, and I bring that. I f prepare, forget about it, and go and, and uh, do the scene. <clears throat> um, all different ways I, I tackle. Um, and I'm always looking for help from anyone. I'm always like, tell me how you would do this. How would, I, I ask everybody. I'm not afraid to say I don't know how to play this. How would you play this? How would I ask a million questions. I love the costume designers to tell. They, they put me in a costume, and I go, oh, I think I know who I am now. I love to get input from absolutely everybody. <clears throat> um, I mean, I definitely always will have a strong sense of what I'm doing, but I like to hear, don't get me wrong, I don't I don't like anyone to say, you're not doing that right, <laughs> or tell me how to do it better. But I I like, I, I love to, I just am a detective. That's how I think of myself, and I like to ask people what they think of what's going on for you here. What do you think of, what do you think our relationship is? What do you think, um, you know, it's fun to, to explore those things with your fellow actors. And I think of um, acting as such a, a, a team sport, really. I love that I grew up in the theater and I know what it means to be on stage and give someone their moment and then take your moment. And it's a very, it's, I like that part of it. And sometimes film actors who, actors who haven't studied in the theater aren't aware of that part of acting. And I feel sorry for them because it's so much fun to be on stage with people who know how to act and give each other moments and, and you know, people that are generous and giving with their acting. I think the biggest challenge for me has been my height. I'm six feet tall. Um, also, my self-esteem, my feeling that I was ready for something or wanting to take on the challenge, being intimidated by the whole business of acting. I wish I had actually, I mean, I studied at the Neighborhood Playhouse and I also went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts for a, um, I got a fellowship to study there and I, I loved all that. I just didn't know how to, the, the business side of it, such a huge part and can be very intimidating to an actor. And I wish I'd gotten sort of, um, schooled on on that how to to be how to <clears throat> what the business is what it means how how does it how do i fit into the business part of it it's um it's a whole different animal and the, the acting is one side and then the business is um different and being as an actor you have to be i'm very thin-skinned and my god it's 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 that was challenging going through auditioning and not getting things and being told I was too tall to act being told I was you know not I was not pretty enough not the, you know those those things are really hard to to um go through as a young actor so and yeah so my my own mind getting in my way of thinking being afraid of I remember when I got my first Broadway play when I was 38 it was a uh, present laughter Noel Coward's present laughter and I was I was, I've never been so afraid, <clears throat> and then I, my brother helped me out realizing that, he made me realize that, that I know, that I, I know what I'm doing, I have the experience, I've grown up doing plays, and just because it's on Broadway doesn't mean, um, it's the same thing, it's the same relationship to the audience, and you'll be fine, he, and he helped me through that, but my gosh, my getting out of my own way really was <laughs> the biggest challenge, it still is, but I'm working on it. Every part I have is a challenge, every one. Nothing I do is ever like, oh, I got this. It's easy. I always think, oh my God, what if I fail? Am I gonna? Am I gonna? And you just have to put yourself out there and 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 trust, trust yourself and trust the people that you work with. And um, yeah, every every everything has its every part has its challenge. I've been lucky to have two long-running shows with a TV show and and doing a recurring a series. You um. Um, you get a different new script every time, but same character. It's it's enormously fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun, um, and it's you know it's different than doing a play over the you know it's like doing a play. I always think of as like Groundhog Day, where you just keep doing it. And I keep thinking if I just get it right this time, I'm not I don't have to do it again. <laughs> it's kind of fun to approach doing a play like that. Believe me, when you're in a long run, you want to get out and see as much as you can, and 
relax. At the moment, and working in the way I do at the moment, I very rarely have that time. One rehearses during the day, plays at night, and if you go on tour, it's not all that easy. There are an awful lot of things you can play in the theatre, and there really aren't an awful lot of parts for women in the film industry at the moment. I have great admiration for, for people who work only in the films, because I think it's just a, a killing existence to, to work those hours. It's and it's also, eyes. it's very isolating because you only only meet the people you're working with in the unit. You can't have any other kind of existence at all. Awards are always, I mean, they're, they're, they're nice to have and they're very, they're very rewarding to have when you realize you've been awarded them by people who are in your own profession. They are, they are very meaningful as far as that is concerned. When people ask you, what will it mean to you now you've got this award? It, it's difficult to say what it means. It just means that you want to go on and and hope you can live up to it, really. I don't know why. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's because, you know, when things go well, it is a bit alarming. I, I sometimes think that I've had so much luck and so much good fortune that... Uh, it frightens me somehow. I, I always feel there's got to be something, you know, must go wrong somewhere. Maybe I'm just always waiting for it. I think I'd have a go at anything if it were interesting enough and if I liked the script. I create a backstory, but I have to say, I used to be way more strict about it. I would have 100, 150 page. I mean, I would write a book. Really? <laughs> now, I don't do that because I find that there is something to be said with leaving yourself alone and being surprised that some things that you may have absolutely thought was true about your character, you get on, you get on that stage and all, all of a sudden the other actor will throw you something and you're like, oh no, that's not actually what it is. So I, I try to do that less. I see it more and more now that I'm, you know, older too, because I feel like I understand human behavior before. I never really um, critiqued it in the past. I just thought, you got to show up. <laughs> the show must go on. You got to do everything the director says, blah, 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 blah. You know, um, so if anyone went against that, I was like, oh, wow, they're difficult. <laughs> but now I, because I'm, I have more experience, um, it's like someone said today, when you, um, uh, w when you critique the behavior, but not the motivating factor behind the behavior. Hmm. And now that I'm older, I understand human behavior more. So I'm like, I wonder where that's coming from. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. I don't judge as much mm -hmm. at all. I uh, must say anywhere, even New York, uh, and especially Hollywood. The actor all over the world is the same. He's a fanatic. He is a person who's madly in love with his work. He wants to achieve uh, a professionalism. He wants to become an artist. And in America, he will go to any means to do this. He'll study, he'll, he'll cram, he will go anywhere to get help. But he does it for a different reason. He does it so he can have a good technique. He's dedicated to him, one to himself. And then he's dedicated, because of that, to the personality that sells. Now, in the West, especially the personality that sells, he's, his success depends on that. Then he's dedicated do what he gets out of the money that uh, they give him because he sells. He, he's dedicated to his family, which is nice, to his swimming pool, if he, or he wants it. And he becomes more and more self-dedicated to himself and his property. Now, that is impossible in another environment. This is a transitional stage for us in America. The theater has been uh, a victim of uh, many things, mechanization, uh, success motive, and now it's coming of age.
we also are going to have to take our place. We're going to have to be uh, nationally understood as representing America, American ideas. We're going to have to go to Europe and uh, state those ideas, not only in terms, and we excel in those terms, of making the world laugh, but also the making the world think. The American actor is going to have to make sacrifices for that. He's not going to only say, I want to be good, give me the part, give me the money, give me success, make me famous, put me in lights. But he's also going to say, what am I capable to say to the world in terms of myself? In the same way that every great theater that comes here, the, the Comédie Française, the uh, Old Vic, the uh, Moscow Art Theater, the Swedish National Theater, and we must arrive somewhere at that point. If not, we are going to be individually successful and not successful as a national uh, uh, cultural symbol. And I hope, I hope we will. My best thing I'd ever heard about acting that my wife said, don't do it unless you have to. And I would add to that, if you are thinking about it or dreaming about it, don't not try it. Because time's short, life is short, give it a shot, see what happens. Take a walk by yourself, with yourself. Ask yourself, who am I? What do I want? What do I dream about? When I started out, there were no managers. It was just, you got an agent, and an agent would help you get work. Although my first work I got on my own, not through an agent. I knocked down doors, I went to auditions. Don't hire a manager and an agent and a business manager and an accountant and a publicist and um ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum Just get a job. <laughs> Act. Do your damnedest to do your best. Don't think about all the rest. If you're doing your work and you've studied and learn a craft, some people have great luck and they just land in it, you have it. Good for you. I think it's a craft. And I think you really need to learn what to do on the days you don't have it. I have no tricks for memorizing lines. I have learned that I have to do it out loud hundreds and hundreds of times. I have learned that I can do it in about five days if it's a substantial stuff. And I do it out loud. And the out loud part to me is very important because it's how you rehearse. First, I'm just learning words and then I'm starting to have thoughts and those thoughts start to percolate and they give me different ideas. And I go, that's interesting. I want to hold on to that. That one I want to forget about. So I've worked with other guys. They, they have photographic memories and they go and they just look at it for a second. And they go, God bless them. I mean, that's a gift. I don't have it. I do know that if I've been away from learning or singing and learning songs, it's harder. It'll take me what normally takes me five to seven days. It will take me maybe a week and a half, two weeks. And then about three weeks into it, my brain cells start multiplying. Just like, you know, when you're lifting a weight and all of a sudden, you know, it's easier to do X amount of reps and I do it quicker. So I'm no longer a nervous wreck most of the time about remembering. It's a lie. I'm always a nervous wreck about remembering. If I could leave you with some advice, what would it be? Take a walk by yourself, with yourself. Ask yourself, who am I? What do I want? What do I dream about? Can I try? And tell yourself, yes, I can. Don't give up. Try for as long as you have the energy to try. And then be gracious to yourself, whether you succeed or whether you don't and be glad you were alive to try. That's the gift of being alive, trying.